Hi, I'm Rick Conwell. I'm glad you're here. And, you know, this is important what I want to talk to you about this time. I'm really excited. I mean, all the topics that I share come from experience and are valuable. But today we're going to look at 10 success secrets of great managers. What is it do the best do that differentiates them from the rest? That's what we're going to look at. My partner, uh, Doug Watsabaugh, and I have studied leadership for 30 years. And we've worked with, geez, I think... Uh, over 300,000 managers in a variety of organizations. And one thing we've learned, it's kind of a summary quote, if you will, if you want your team to be better, you have to be better as a leader. Now, there are some challenges out there. And one of the things I want to emphasize is that, you know, not all employees come and bring their best to work. Have you ever noticed that? I mean, there are some employees only want to do so much. But you know what? You've got to believe in people. All people have problems. It's whether or not, as a leader, we can find the greatness that's within them. For example, these people that I'm showing here, they all had challenges, but today there are, they're celebrities. They're well-known. I mean, Pink had her personal challenges. Uh, Stallone, he tried to get acting jobs 1,500 times and was turned down, but he hung in there, and he did it anyway. Michael Jordan, for heaven's sakes, was told uh, or was cut from the basketball team in high school. Can you believe that? The greatest player of all time, and he was told, hey, you're not good enough. And Rafael Nadal, man, he, he had back problems and a temper, and the temper got in the way of his game. But all of them overcame those challenges. And I bring that up because one of the things that great managers do is they believe in people. They look for the potential within them to be able to apply the leadership strategies I'm going to talk to you about. Now, you could say, hey, all those people are uh, millionaires and entertainers and uh, everybody knows them. What about in my company? Well, here I have somebody named Suki Sahota, <laughs> superstar manager. She's the one with the trophy in the picture. And she helped her team win all kinds of awards for service excellence and sales excellence in a male-dominated business. <laughs> but she was able to show, because of her persistence and her hard work as a leader, that uh, she could relate to people, no matter who they were, and bring value to win and to be successful. So you don't have to be a celebrity to do what I'm talking about. It's the news here. Now, there's lots of management and leadership gurus out there, and there are many great books out there. We have our own book, Superstar Leadership. Here's the other thing we need to pay attention to about a success secret of the most, the best managers, is they're students of the game. They keep studying. They keep learning. But you know what? There's a gap. There's a gap out there. You'll see some statistics here. And what the statistics show is that we got a problem with leadership in the workplace today. Now, that probably doesn't surprise you because maybe you've had a bad boss or two in your career. You know what I'm talking about there? Here's what leadership derailment studies show. 50% of managers fail. Worldwide, there's about 300 million managers. Half of them going to work today, and they're getting away of employees. They're not helping them. At least half. Some of the other 50% have uh, skill deficiencies. And then 70% of employees say they don't see value in their CEOs. Now that's a leadership problem. Here we got the executives and people don't believe in them. And then here's the probably the most disastrous thing. 87% of employees are disengaged. In other words, they're not bringing their best, like I said earlier. They're not coming to work because they're excited. They want to do a good job. They want to succeed. <laughs> they're going to work just to get the paycheck. And I can tell you this, that does not bring the best performance. Now, the good news is, what I'm going to share here in detail will tell you what you can do to change all that. Where you can be in the upper echelon of the best of the best without having to go to a fancy school. You just need to... Follow through and learn more about what I talked to you about. Now, there are everyday manager failures out there. Uh, you can overcome those. But this is what happens. These kinds of things that are listed here. Poor execution, poor communication. we got to do better than that. You can do better than that. When my business partner Doug and I wrote our book on leadership, we asked how effective are managers today? How does this impact employee engagement? And what do great leaders do? Now, based on what I've described for the failure... What do you think? Does that help people do their best? No, what we're finding in the workplace, besides the disengagement, 
is that uh, employees aren't feeling recognized for what they're doing. They're not feeling part of the team. Um, they're not performing customer service the best that they can. That's the impact poor leadership has on them. So how do you know if that's happening? Look at how people are performing. <laughs> what is their customer service like? Is there a lot of turnover on the team? Is there team problems, conflicts all the time? People coming late, uh, not following through, those kinds of things. That gives you a clue that the leadership isn't as effective as it needs to be. So in other words, poor leadership has a negative impact on employee performance. Now, you can be better than that. So what do great leaders do then? That's all the introduction to get us there. You may want to jot down a few notes as I zero in on this because it's that critical to your success. So let's take a look at it. First thing they do is change. <laughs> Remember I said if you want to be a better leader and you want your team to be better, you have to improve what you do. So you got to change something. you got to be willing to learn. So open your mind for breakthrough performance and understand that people are motivated by achievement, recognition, pride in doing a good job, responsibility, uh, looking for an opportunity for advancement, growth, and learning. If we can provide a work environment that gives this to people, they excel. So there are some very specific strategies that the great leaders do to make that happen. So now we'll get into them. Here we go. First thing is they set up clear goals and expectations. In other words, they get their team involved in team planning, they do individual goal setting, they go through it in a regular, positive, constructive basis, they ask for input to do those things, and they measure them on an ongoing, regular basis. When they do that, guess what? Just that alone, the people start performing better because 80% of job performance problems are because of a lack of clear expectations and goals. Then the second thing they do is they provide training for them. They teach them how to do their jobs better, both on the technical side and the people side. And when you do that, as you can see uh, from the research that I put up here, is that people perform better. You want the best people? Train them the best. The third thing is they communicate. They do staff meetings. They communicate one-on-one. -on -one. They do informal communication. Uh, they get uh, process improvement teams. They get them involved, and they do it regularly and consistently. I just came from a, a group of managers. You know how they communicate? Text and email. That's it. Now, guess what? How personal is that? thing we need to remember about working relationships, it's personal. It's emotional. <laughs> Could you imagine raising your children without ever talking to them? Except by text? <laughs> it's not going to work. It doesn't work in a workplace either. So that's what we're talking about in communication. Then they learn coaching skills. In other words, they know how to sit down with somebody and go through a process of talking about the goals, what they do well, what they can do better, what their action plan is to move forward. It's tied into the goals that I talked about earlier. And they do that regularly. Coaching is not just for poor for performers. It's for every performer. You coach a poor performer, they get better. You, you coach a good performer, they get better. You got to do it consistently, weekly or monthly, depending on the situation. And then here's the other thing, the fifth point on, that I want to emphasize here. And then there's still five more. So hang in there. This is a powerful program that can make a difference in what you do today. And then a fifth area is flexibility in their leadership style. So in other words, they know that different strokes for different folks. In other words, some people need more attention, others a little less attention. Some people value more recognition, some a little, rec uh, a little different recognition. Just knowing that they adjust their approach to helping them based on the person's skill and will, they help them be more effective. Most leaders use one way to lead. It's my way or the highway. We do things the way I like it, but that's not good. Adjust your approach. Sixth area, then, is giving recognition. People like to be appreciated for what they do. In fact, research shows that the more recognition you give, as long as it's done genuinely and sincerely, is that people increase their performance just off of that alone. And then tied to the goals, we do promotions and incentives. In other words, the workplace sometimes can become the same old, same old. In other words, just showing up, doing the same thing every day. Well, you got to change the pace once in a while with a little fun, a little contest, a little energy, a little teamwork. That's what I'm talking about, promotions and incentives. So it changes the pace. The eighth area that we want to focus on is customer loyalty. In other words, every 
manager and every team that he or she has has a customer. Could be an internal customer, could be an external customer. Here's the thing, we want to serve them well. What it does is it brings out the best in people because there's a bigger purpose than just pushing paper or creating a design or taking pictures or uh, um, selling something. We're serving the customer and we're looking to do it well. And then hiring. There's a better process for hiring. Now today, one of the big problems many managers face is that the hiring has been taken away from them. They have HR people to do it or recruiters do it. From I say this, every leader needs to be engaged in the uh, process of hiring anybody that will report to him or her. So ask to get involved. <clears throat> Ask to be a part of it so that you can uh, help build your team from the very beginning. And then the last area, whatever we do, we need to do it with trust and integrity. Because right now, today, there's a great leadership trust. The U.S. Congress, for example, only 7% of Americans believe in them. <laughs> That's a disaster. In the workplace today, because of many leaders that have fallen from grace, there's a lack of that trust. We follow through on what we say we're going to do. We're going to walk the talk. We're going to lead by example. That begins to build trust in all of these other areas that I've talked about. It's about integrity and caring, the key two values that drives all of this. You want your people to succeed, and you're going to help them do that because if they succeed, you succeed. This is all part of our superstar leadership model that covers these 10 areas that can help you be successful. Learn more about them. Dig into the detail, because I only hit the highlights on many of these. But if you dig into them, it's amazing thing will happen. You become a student again, and you will get better in time. And it pays off in higher performance. All the research says it. Now, excellence in leadership is not what you know. It's what you do with what you know. Hey, thanks for coming. I have this dream that soars on golden wings. I visualize your achievements and your legacy that sings. I do not know all about your awesome goals or your persistent efforts to raise the bar. I only know that you can be the best, if not a superstar. Thank you.